In this edition of Back in History, we'll take you back to the events that characterized the fourth military coup in post-independence Nigeria. The period between 1966 and 1976 was a very turbulent period in the history of Nigeria. Within this period alone, Nigeria had witnessed four military coups in quick successions. Three out of the four coups were very bloody and many lives were lost in the process. The number four of these coups was the assassination of Motala Mohammed by a group of soldiers led by Lieutenant Colonel Boka Sukadimka. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. One characteristic feature of Lagos State Nigeria is the age-long traffic situation. Almost every part of the state has a fair share of traffic. In Lagos, motorists can remain in traffic for several minutes, running into hours. In the year 1976, the Lagos traffic had a major victim, Motala Mohammed. The third military head of state in Nigeria was assassinated with ease at a traffic jam in Lagos. His assassination thus became the fourth military coup in Nigeria. The date was 13 February 1976. It was in the early hours of the morning, a time when most people were rushing out to work. It was on a Friday. Motala Mohammed had dressed up for work. His aides were prepared to drive him to work. His workplace at the time was Dodan Barracks, which was the seat of government in Nigeria. Motala lived outside the barracks but went to the barracks every day to run the affairs of the country as the military head of state. On this day, Motala set out in his black Mercedes Benz salon car driven by his official driver. He drove through George Street and on approaching the Federal Secretariat in Ikoyi, there was a traffic jam and Motala's vehicle waited to observe the traffic. Motala did not know that he was not going to be alive beyond the traffic point. Some armed soldiers led by Lieutenant Colonel Boka Sukadimka had positioned themselves at a petrol station in the opposite direction. They were dressed in long flowing babariga and their weapons were hidden in the babariga. As Motala's vehicle waited for the traffic to clear, the soldiers drew closer and opened fire directly at his Mercedes Benz. The shooting was sporadic, hot, deadly and right on target. The occupants had no chances of survival. Motala Mohammed was killed on the spot. His ADC, Lieutenant Akintunde, also died on the spot. His driver was also killed. The vehicle, which was riddled with bullets, is preserved till today at the National Museum, Lagos. At the time of his death, Motala Mohammed had only been in office as military head of state for 200 days. Motala was only 37 years old at the time. Aside the traffic situation, the other thing that made it very easy for Motala to be killed was the fact that he was the head of state who used to travel without military backup or escort. It is reported that at the time of his assassination, the only visible sign of protection was a pistol carried by his orderly, thus making his assassination seamless and without resistance whatsoever. Having been confirmed dead, Motala was flown on board Nigerian Airways from Lagos to Kano, where he was buried in accordance with Islamic rights. A Christian memorial service was also held in his honor in Lagos State with his deputy Lushikano Basenjo in attendance. But 
Mutalawa Muhammad was never to be seen again, having been cut short at the age of 37. His ADC, Lieutenant Akintunde, was also buried after a church service was conducted in his honor. Lieutenant Colonel Buka Sukadimka, the mastermind of Motala's assassination, could not take over the reins of power. His school thus went down in history as an unsuccessful goal. A couple of things worked against Dimka. Immediately after the assassination of Motala Muhammad, Dimka was at Radio Nigeria, making a national broadcast. In his words, Unquote. Good morning, fellow Nigerians. This is Lieutenant Colonel B. Dimka of the Nigerian Army calling. I bring you good tidings. Motala Mohammed's deficiency has been detected. His government is now overthrown by the young revolutionaries. All the 19 military governors have no powers over the states they now govern. The state affairs will be run by military brigade commanders until further notice. All commissioners are sacked, except for the armed forces and the police commissioners who will be redeployed. All senior military officers should remain calm in their respective spots. No divisional commander will issue orders or instructions until further notice. Any attempts to foil these plans from any quarters will be met with death. You are warned. It is all over the 19 states. All borders A and C are closed until further notice. Coffee is imposed from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Thank you. We are all together. It is also reported that Dimka had made a quick trip to the British High Commission where he met with the British High Commissioner Sir Martin Le Quince and told him to get in contact with Jacob Gowan, who at the time was in London, having earlier been removed from office as military head of state by Motala Mohammed, and tell him to proceed to Togo and await for their instruction. The High Commissioner declined his request. It was thus not clear whether Dimkar executed the coup to enable him to succeed Motala as head of state, or to enable him pathway for General Yakub Gawon to return to Nigeria and continue in office as head of state. Dimka's coup was largely characterized by confusion and lack of coordination. While Dimka was at Radio Nigeria running the national broadcast, serious efforts were being made by the military to crush Dimka's coup. There was a counter broadcast from Benin City by the then Brigade Commander Colonel Isabuka. Disassociating other army units from the coup. There was another broadcast from Kaduna and another one from Calabar by the then Brigade Commander Colonel Maman Vatsa. University students from Lagos and Ibadan also took to the streets to protest the coup. While Dimka was still at Radio Nigeria running the broadcast, efforts were made by top military officers in Lagos and other parts of the country to frustrate Dimka's coup. Ibrahim Babangida, who was a colonel at the time, was detailed to lead troops to the radio station and stop the broadcast. This assignment was a dangerous one and had all the potentials to terminate Ibrahim Babangida's life. Babangida breathed up and decided to go to the radio station unarmed and have a conversation with Dimka, whom he has described severally as his friend. Perhaps as a precautionary measure, Babangida ensured, albeit remotely, that the radio station was surrounded with armored tanks manned by soldiers under his command. He then moved personally into the radio station to have a conversation with Dimka. It is said by some 
that Dimka was a lover of champagne and that Babangida went to meet Dimka at the radio station with a bottle of champagne with full knowledge that Dimka would be excited by it. Without much ado, Dimka and his men were dislodged from the radio station and Dimka escaped. Dimka first ran to Jos and then to Afiku in present day Boeing states. Radio announcements were made every 15 minutes calling on anyone who sees Dimka to immediately report him to the nearest police station or army post. Dimka was a smart man and was able to beat the roadblocks without being noticed. Dimka would have escaped to any neighboring country unnoticed, but he decided to stop over at Afikbo to meet with an old girlfriend, Ugo, whom he had known while he, Dimka, was serving as, so, as a soldier in Afikbo. The decision to stop over at Afikbo and see Ugo later proved to be a very costly decision for Dimka. During the Nigerian Civil War and after the war, Dimka had served as an officer in, Adi- in Afikbo and was very popular among the people there. He was not someone that could hide in Afikbo, even at night. He was a jolly good fellow among the locals. He had a lot of friends and so it was easy for people to identify him. Dimka was seen strolling near the Afikbo Mosque let us in checking into Friendship Hotel Afikbo. He checked in with a fictitious name. He later sent for Ugo, who came to the hotel to spend the night with him. The first room he checked into had burglary proof, but Dimka insisted that the room be changed for him. He got a room that had no burglary proof. This was done with a reason. The unprotected window would later serve as his escape route. While there, information got to the army and the hotel was surrounded at night, but the soldiers only concentrated in the front of the hotel. The soldiers began checking the hotel room by room and when they tapped on a nearby door, Dimka told his girlfriend Ugo to go and open the door for them while he, Dimka, escaped through the toilet window and ran away. He went through farmlands and then entered a vehicle across the road to Bakliki. Every three kilometers on the road had a roadblock, but the soldiers could not recognize Dimka. Dimka kept going unnoticed. At a point on the journey, Dimka voluntarily handed over himself to a police sergeant at a checkpoint. He told him, unquote, I am Dimka, the man you have been looking for. He brought out his hands and was immediately handcuffed by the policeman, who then took him away and handed him over to the military. The name of the police sergeant that arrested Dimka was Sergeant Abdullahi Jika Iya. He was an instant celebrity at the time. Upon the announcement of his capture of Dimka, he was the most wanted man in Nigeria. Before the capture, there was a promise by the Nigerian government that anyone who was able to capture Dimka or is able to lead the security agents to his hideout will be handsomely rewarded. The story has it that the handsome reward which was promised had never been given to Sergeant Abdullahi up to the time of his death in 2002. Abdullahi left behind a wife, Aisha Jika Iya, a primary school teacher, and two children. Dimka was detained and later tried by a military tribunal set up by the then military government the tribunal was headed by Major General Obada of Delta State. Obada had once served as ADC to Nigeria's first president, Dr. Namdi Azikiwe. The tribunal had a mandate to try the coup plotters to establish the extent of their culpability in the coup. 
In an interview granted to Vanguard newspaper on July 3, 2010, Major General Obada noted, and I quote, I was appointed as president to the tribunal that tried the coup plotters. I had no choice, but I was fair. My job was to preside over the trial and ensure that whoever was guilty was committed to prison. So, we did the trial and committed the offenders to punishment. Unquote. To the surprise of many, Dimka did not deny his involvement in the coup throughout the sitting of the tribunal. When a recorded message in connection with the coup was played to him at the tribunal, Dimka boldly admitted that the voice on the tape was his own. He added, unquote, of course, being a soldier, I made it a point of duty that I have an honor to maintain and I believe that I have no reason at this stage to lie. So, all what you've heard has been my recording, my personal recording. On 15 May 1976, Dimka was found guilty and was publicly executed by firing squad at the Krikri Maximum Security Prison in Lagos. It is stated that even after being tied to the stake for execution, Dimka requested that the younger officer who was stationed to shoot him should first give him a salute and compliment as a senior military officer. This brought to an end the military career and life of Colonel Bokasuka Dimka, one of the earliest foreign trained military officers in Nigeria. He attended the Australian Officer Cadet School, Potsi, where he trained and was commissioned in 1963 as a second lieutenant for the Nigerian Army. His execution was announced by Motalas Mohamed Olushegun Obasanjo. Others were also arrested and tried for the coup. Many of them were sentenced to death by firing squad, while others were given various sentences depending on their levels of involvement in the coup. Convicted persons were executed in two batches. While some were executed on March 11, 1976, others like Dimka was executed on May 17, 1976. Those executed with Dimka on the said date were Colonel I. Booker, Lieutenant S. Kwale, Warrant Officer Bawa, Major J. K. Afalabi, H. Sheyen, and Joseph Gumwok. Joseph Gumwok was a police officer and he was the first military governor of Benue Plateau State during Gawan's administration. He was implicated in Dimka School and was executed by firing squad. Motala Mohammed and Dimka were not enemies. As a matter of fact, Dimka and Motala were participants in the counter coup of 1966 that removed General Ironsi and brought in General Yakubu Gawan. Dimka later participated in the coup that brought Motala to power. It is maintained in some quarters that Motala had promised to create more states for Nigeria. And one of the states he promised to create was to be known as mainland states which was to be carved out of the present-day Cross River states with headquarters in the back region of present-day Akwaibom states and that Dimka was to be the military governor of the said mainland states. Motala indeed created most states but did not create mainland states and did not make Dimka a military governor. It is said that Dimka became angry with Motala from that moment began to nurse plans to eliminate him by all means. Unfortunately, neither Motala nor Dimka is alive to confirm this narrative. But whatever the narrative, and whatever the intention may have been, the truth remains that Motala Mohammed was killed in Lagos State, Nigeria by a group of soldiers led by Colonel Bukasuka Dimka. General Motala Mohammed was born in Kano on 8 November 1938. He attended the famous Barewa College and later attended the Royal Military College Sandhurst. He served in Congo 
and in many other places. At the age of 33 in 1971, he was already a brigadier general, becoming one of the youngest generals in the history of the Nigerian army. He was the brain behind the relocation of the Federal Capital Territory of Nigeria from Lagos to Abuja. He was married to a Yoruba woman, Ajoke Mohammed, and the marriage was blessed with six children. Thanks for watching this edition of Back in History and do remember to subscribe to the channel for regular notifications.